एवरी वन वेलकम बैक टू माई चैनल डेंटल कैफे इफ यू आर न्यू टू माई चैनल डेंटल फॉर गेट टू सब्सक्राइब एंड हिट द बेल आइकन फॉर द लेटेस्ट अपडेट टूडे आई एम गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट द डायरेक्ट पल्प कैपिंग इन डायरेक्ट पल्प कैपिंग वॉज ऑलरेडी कवर्ड इन पार्ट वन ओके दैन बिगिन विद द डायरेक्ट पल्प कैपिंग वॉट इज डायरेक्ट पल्प कैपिंग और डी पी सी दिस इज अ प्रोसीजर इन विच द स्मॉल एक्सपोजर ऑफ द पल्प encountered during cavity preparation or following traumatic injury or due to caries with a sound surrounding dentin this is very important point point sound surrounding dentin is dressed with an appropriate biocompatible radio opaque base in contact with the exposed pulp tissue prior to placing a restoration is termed as direct pulp capping look at the figure we have a deep carious lesion close to pulp or involving a part of pulp horn and having a sound dentin around it techniques of direct pulp capping first of all rubber dam isolation was done once an exposure is encountered further manipulation of pulp is avoided cavity should be irrigated with saline chloramine or distilled water If hemorrhage occur it should be arrested with light pressure from the sterile cotton pellets place the pulp capping material on the exposed pulp with application of minimal pressure so as to avoid forcing the material into the pulp chamber after that place temporary restoration final restoration is done after parenteral bridge is formed and pulp vitality is maintained there is lack of pain and minimal inflammatory response after determination of all these then only we'll proceed for the final restoration okay try to understand with the figures first of all use local anesthesia and isolation with rubber dam then uh, we have a deep carious lesion which is close to the pulp or involving a part of pulp horn So first step is to remove the necrotic and infected dentin which leads to a formation of cavity outline as you can see in the figure exposure occurs cavity should be irrigated with saline chloramine or distilled water the bleeding or hemorrhage is occur at a site should be arrested with light pressure from sterile cotton pellets then place the pulp capping material like calcium hydroxide on the exposed pulp uh, which will help in formation of dentinal bridge then apply base cement after that temporary restoration time to time take a radiograph to check the formation of calcified dentin and after few weeks you will notice a formation of denti uh, dentinal bridge or a calcified dentin the dentinal bridge is formed and patient is asymptomatic then again apply base and then final restoration is done indications light red bleeding from the exposure site that can be controlled by the cotton pellets traumatic exposure in a dry clean field which report to the dental office within 24 hours mechanical exposure less than 1 square mm surrounded by sound dentin in an asymptomatic vital deciduous tooth mechanical or caries exposure less than 1 square mm in an asymptomatic vital young permanent tooth small pulp exposures produced during cavity preparation that is pinpoint exposure surrounded by sound dentin a when tooth is not painful with the exception of discomfort caused by food minimal or no bleeding from the exposure site contraindications large pulp exposure presence of caries surrounding the exposure site pain at night spontaneous pain tooth mobility excessive bleeding indicates hyperemia or pulpal inflammation Opening of periodontal membrane, intra-radicular radiolucency, prolonged or serous exudates, 
swelling, fistula, root resorption, pulpal calcification. All are the histological changes after pulp capping. According to the article given by Glass and Zander in 1949, what happens after 24 hours of application of calcium hydroxide? Try to understand with the figures. After 24 hours of application of calcium hydroxide, necrotic zone adjacent to calcium hydroxide paste is separated from the healthy pulp tissue by a deep staining basophilic layer. Look at the figure. We have a healthy pulp. We have necrotic zone plus blood pigments in it and calcium hydroxide layer. Necrotic zone and healthy pulp is separated by a basophilic layer within or after 24 hours of application of calcium hydroxide. And there is a stasis of capillaries plus leukocytes around the uh, basophilic layer. After 7 days of application of calcium hydroxide, what all changes that you have to notice? After 7 days, there is increase in cellular and fibroblastic activity. As we know, this is pulp, this is calcium hydroxide and after 7 days, a necrotic zone size decreases and there is a calcification in the basophilic layer as you can see in the figure and migrating fibroblast after 14 days of application of calcium hydroxide after 14 days partly calcified fibrous tissue lined by odontoblastic cell is seen below the calcium proteinate zone disappearance of necrotic zone as you can see in the figure we have almost normal pulp with decrease, further decrease in the size of the necrotic zone and almost calcified basophilic layer and we can see we have a new odontoblast formation. Okay, after 28 days of application of calcium hydroxide, what all changes that you have to notice? And yeah, all these changes are seen radiographically, not clinically. After 28 days, zone of new dentine. Pulp almost become normal. We have osteodentine plus calcified zone. Rontoblastic cell differentiate into new dentine. And zone of necrosis is completely debrided, leaving a empty space. Because of successful pulp capping. First, maintenance of pulp vitality lack of undue sensitivity or pain, minimal uh, mal pulp inflammatory response, ability of pulp to maintain itself without progressive degeneration, lack of internal resorption and intraradicular pathosis. Now I hope that pulp capping is clear to all.